If there's one name that fits better than any other, it's boomers because their logic makes my head explode. I have no idea what's in store with this video, but it was suggested to me over on my Discord, and so I'm going to respond to it with the emotional nuance and the emotional intelligence of a mental health counselor talking about cultural and generational differences between human beings. If you'd like to join the Discord and talk with me throughout the week, of course, links to everything are in the bio down below, the description down below, bio down below, whatever, the words down below, click on the link, it'll take you to the place. And while you're down there, hit subscribe. It helps spread mental health awareness and content to those who need it most. So do your part, hit subscribe, and let's get to the video. I finally have a second to address that. Honestly, I'm so excited because I studied this. So the baby boomers were the sort of result oh. of the silent generation of the greatest generation. Oh, hi. Sorry, my kid's right there. So let's think about the 1950s. Okay. And let's think about how that looked to grow up in. Mm -hmm. This is post-World War II. This is when everyone's coming back from war. And then you have basically a whole new sort of family that was invented. What was invented and created and sold to as a product by the government was, hey, now you can have uh, a single income, you can have one earner, you can have a wife and two kids. In this little family dynamic. That was, that was huge at that time. Like that was, that was it. Like, you know, I, I have to appreciate in some ways being a millennial, listen, bruh, we got our problems, but millennials, I feel like there was this acceptance, this awareness and this understanding that you could have whatever sort of life you wanted to. Like even I've got some friends who are very like pro non kids. Like uh, one of my good friends I graduated with, if you want to look her up, she's got a very successful Instagram page, child free millennial. We graduated from counseling school together. Um, and so she's very big proponent of not having kids. I have a child myself. It works for me. And I love that. Like the millennials, we do have this understanding of you can be whatever you want to be. You can choose the life that you want to live. But back then, there was no nuance. You did the thing. You did the same thing that everyone else did. And I think it's so interesting that we make shows like Fallout, which, by the way, loving. If you've seen Fallout, let me know in the description down below. Don't spoil it. I'm only like one episode in. I'm getting to it, but it's great. But it's so interesting to see that like 50s sort of style of art and mentality because it's like, it's eerie. It's like the back rooms. Like everything is the same. Everyone fits into this cookie cutter mold. Like uh, Edward Scissorhands is a great sort of liminal space kind of dream movie where everything fa falls into and fits into the same sort of category. And it's creepy because everyone is like fake and plastic and oh, ooh, gives me the shivers. But it's like a horror film without being directly horror. Anyways, I digress. It's true though. She, she's making a great point here. You are totally self-sufficient, you have everything you need, and you do not need things like generations of people to help you. Ah. So as part of the push against communism, they pushed this sort of idealistic view that is essentially a broken family. What sort of happens when you separate a family from their community, or you separate a family into one little tiny piece of a family instead of the big sort of families we used to live i.e multi-generational mm -hmm. sorry my kid walked in and he <laughs> i would start doing that in my videos i.e multi-generational eyes up he wants me to spin him in this chair this took away community and this took away our sort of sense of what family life meant and also just our spirit of taking care of each other the same thing can be suggested with the Latchkey Kids slash Gen X. In the 70s, women were allowed to start having things like bank accounts and credit cards, and it was getting a little bit easier to leave your horrible husband. Mm, girl. This meant that you needed to work by yourself, and because you had no family, because you were separated from them from one generation on, you, in essence, had to abandon your kid and just give them a key to your house, hoping that they made it in while you were working, and you would hope that you would get home from work after your horrible job of being harassed every day Oof. to i hope your kid you hope your kid just passed out in front of the tv with a half-eaten tv dinner now it's like so sad though like the gen x like the boomer gen x sort of relationship just like breaks my heart so much like i've gotten the opportunity to like listen to the stories of gen xers and it's just like Wow. Like there's so much trauma there. Like from the from the boomer generation. Like it's um 
Wow, it's a it's a whole bundle. And I tell you what, if you want to have some empathy for it, like listen to some of the stories about the way that they grew up. It's just like so lonely and so isolating. Like if you identify with that generation, like please let me know like what your stories are because I just appreciate listening to them because they give me such an appreciation for how different my story is with its own trials, tribulations, and troubles. But it gives me such an appreciation and such a perspective, a context for the things that I've experienced in my childhood compared to the previous generations. Can we also take a moment to appreciate like what sort of dystopian future we live in? Like you can't see this person's eyes because of the captions on the screen. And then there's this big comment and like she's spinning her child in the background. It's like that scene from Ready Player One where like research shows that the game is still playable when 46% of the screen is still covered by ads. You remember that? Like I'm mixing up the numbers, but it's just like we live in this weird time where like quality video doesn't mean anything. It's just like content, 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 content. Strange. Now, enter millennials who are the last generation to Me. remember life before the internet. We found communities online. We are the first ones to have like that rise of globalism. Really quick, yeah. just Sorry, that was really. Cool. I love that. You can find lots of evidence in this by looking at how we ate from convenience products in the 1950s and 60s uh, to TV dinners rising in popularity yeah. in the 80s. When you look at how people, regular people, ate, you can look into their lives and discern what happened. Now, millennials, what are we doing with food? We're looking back to farm to table and organic and things like that, which is, in essence, all the things that we missed. Gone are the super processed things. We want only organic chicken milk we're romanticizing a past that we never had and we never even had the opportunity to have because it was taken away from us via the threat of communism interesting it's so interesting too, like to tap into the collective unconscious like as i'm no i'm gonna listen you're gonna glaze over but bear with me for 15 seconds okay it's so interesting to see the collective unconscious and the way that we deal with archetypes like in our culture because of history like this communism, fascism, Nazism stuff in like the way that we're always fighting the Russians in like all of our stories, the way that we're always fighting Nazis in all of our stories and the things that we despise and then push into our cultural shadow because of this like big war, like the Cold War, World War II, all of these different things like the fight against Chinese communism, all of these things. Uh, it's so interesting to see the way that affects us emotionally and socially like in our culture. And I know that you may gloss over and be like, oh, this guy's like a dream analyst. Yes, I'm a dream analyst. And I get into like the social cultural nuance and the way that we repress things into our collective unconscious and the way that Americans have a certain style of dream because of the shared history that we've been through. It's fascinating to see some of the like markers and the similarities between dreams of people of the same culture because of that shared history. It's it's very interesting. And you run into that, especially generationally and culturally honestly more than half the honestly half the millennials i know their entire retirement plan is to create the community we were Oof, denied yes like how many millennial people do you know that just want to buy a bunch of land with their friends and we all want to raise our kids together and just have goats and chickens and stuff yep. we're actually way closer to the life of the greatest generation i.e the parents of boomers that's the best now of course this is like one version of the really really complex socioeconomic stuff that happened but that is just a huge piece of the puzzle. So I hope that helped. Wow. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. Let me know what you think. Was that helpful? Did it answer all your questions? Are there follow-up questions you've got? Put it in the comments down below and let me know what generation you're a part of and how you feel that affected you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.